The next update, as you might have guessed by this point, with it being titled The Age of Sorcery, what could it mean? includes sorcery. What's up, everybody, and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. So in this video, I'm going to cover the sorcery that is coming with Update 3.0. I've decided that instead of trying to hit you guys with an enormously long video covering the entire dev stream, as a recap, what I'm going to do is section these out. So I've got a video about the battle pass and the store already uploaded to my channel. And I'm going to be doing a video about the perks and attribute system and then the building system as well. So you'll find all those videos on my channel and do the best to go back and link all those videos in the description of each one of the videos so they're easy to find. Jumping right into this though, I know there's a lot of concern from the PvP community when it comes to sorcery, but I want you to listen to the first line, the first thing that Dennis says in this next clip. We don't want you to be replacing combat and exiles with sorcery. So I know there's also been a lot of concerns that this will turn into, you know, high fantasy <laughs> spell flinging duels and swords and, and bows and everything will be pointless but that goes against our our like the cloth we're cut from right yeah. like everything about exiles is meant to be intimate bloody melee combat and that doesn't change even if you're a sorcerer there are things that you can do from farther away that can influence combat but at the end of the day in there and you've got to chop stuff down mm -hmm. just like any barbarian would because that's the nature of the universe yeah and that's what we try to keep true in the sorcery system as well so what it sounds like Dennis is trying to say here is that sorcery in Conan Exiles is going to be more of a tool than it is going to be a function of combat. Yes, you can affect the way that combat plays out by using sorcery, but in order to defeat your enemies, you're still going to have to pick up steel and take that steel to flesh. So whenever you start playing the game, you'll encounter sorcery kind of organically. Uh, part of the story that is being told is that sorcerers have been uh, kind of almost, almost in a pilgrimage style fashion sent out uh, into different camps in the world and you'll encounter the sorcerers and, and when you, when, if and when you take them down you might find a, a mysterious map and the map will lead you to somewhere in the world that will lead you to find a, a scary old tome and that tome contains power, the, the essence of the corrupt, corruptive power that lets you cast magical spells and perform rituals. And what you're doing whenever you read that tome is you're learning a, a language, and we call these the words of power. The words of power are used to construct, construct spells. So, Andy, if you can actually s snap back to that video yeah. of casting again, whenever you're looking at this set of uh, stones that's coming up, what you're actually seeing is a representation of those words. And you put, the, you put those words and syllables together to build a phrase that casts a spell. So as you can see from the clip, it takes time to be able to cast these spells. It's not something that you're just one clicking a button and all of a sudden lightning is raining down on your enemies. Even when you do complete the actual words of power to cast that spell, there's still a time period before those things actually start manifesting in the world. Now my guess is that the spell casting can actually be interrupted by both NPCs or other player characters causing damage to the caster. So this is something that is going to be dangerous. You are going to have to have proper timing, you're going to have to have concealment, or you're going to have to have other friends fending off the enemies as you are casting these spells. And I do think some of the spells are designed strictly for PvP. I know I've seen a lot of comments that say, well, PvP was completely not thought about in this update. But as you move through and look at the different spells and what they could potentially be used for, I think a lot of these spells were developed with base rating in mind. 
One of the spells that we see in this clip is the ability to jump from a great height without taking any damage. Now it's absolutely going to shake up the way that PvP is played. I'm not going to say that it's not going to do that. However, I don't think this is a PvP ruiner as I've seen many people claim in comments and forum posts and different places around the internet. Now, as you guys know, I'm a PvE player. However, I have played PvP in the past, and I can already think about ways that I could use these different tactics or these different spells to my advantage in a PvP situation. And you'll see, actually, corruption is, uh, is now inexorably tied to sorcery in right. the game now. Um, so each uh, various spells cause additional corruption buildup on your character, uh, up to a maximum of 50% corruption uh, as it's currently. Uh, and different different spells will increase your corruption by different amounts. Uh, you can kind of see on this example here, like uh, obviously these values might be subject to change, but you can see here like 20% corruption, like so. Uh, casting the spell, I believe. This one requires 20% corruption. Requires, I'm yeah. so sorry, I'm so sorry. So okay. there's kind of different power tiers of spells as well. and. As you go into those higher power tiers, they require more complex reagents to cast a spell. Mm -hmm. That's an important thing to know is that casting spells does require reagents because we want it to feel more ritualistic. Uh, we want it to feel s slower paced and not like an action game where you're just pushing a button on the hot bar and flinging a spell out. It should feel like a ritual. So get going to the world and collecting reagents, collecting the things you need to learn how to do the spells. All of that is part of making it feel more uh, premeditated, more mm -hmm. calculated, right? Very much so, and, yeah. And as you cast spells, they generate corruption on your character. They make you more corrupt because magic at its core is inherently evil in Howard's universe. Yep. There is no good magic. All of the magic that makes you more evil makes your corruption increase. And you can cast more powerful spells the higher your corruption is. So some of the more powerful spells that you've seen in the trailer already, like... Flying the Bat Demon, for an example, um, it requires a much higher level of corruption. So, if you want to be able to do that, you are going to have to risk your body and you know give your health away as part of the trade-off for being able to use this power. So as they explained in that clip, it costs a lot for you to be able to actually be a sorcerer. Not only are you going to be giving up attributes that you would normally have because you are causing corruption to yourself and we'll get on to that in the next video that I do about this update but you are also going to be corrupted so your health bar your stamina bar are going to be shorter this is all part of the balance for sorcery. The balance between do I go in with just a two-handed hammer and smash my enemies, or do I take the route of a twisted and evil sorcerer, give up some life, and hope to God that nobody is able to touch me through the spells that I'm casting. And then you'll see in a bit too, um, well, I mean, uh, having a ton of corruption also causes your character to have very visible uh you start your character starts to suffer like very visible Protest. side effects yes yeah. for yeah. for allowing that corruption within your body so we also added a spell that actually lets you hide that effect as well and you can turn that on and off it actually i believe it lasts forever until you cancel it damn yeah, so yeah, this so you, is the effect of being fully corrupted. Yeah, and then uh, this is me very conspicuously cropping the video so you don't see the dev casting the sure. window, and then there you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a really cool feature that they added to Conan Exiles, that your body actually changes with the ability to cast these spells. So as a sorcerer, your body will disform, disfigure, and you will look more corrupted than you would have before. But they also know that some people aren't going to want to look like that, myself included. So they've given you an option to cast a spell so that you don't actually look like that all the time. Saying like, doesn't sorcery tie into the braces at all? Like, as in like, something about you can't do sorcery stuff if you have a bracelet? Or is that it like... is part of the story. Oh. Okay. Um, I guess I won't divulge too much of it myself, but I'll give you the high level. The high level is there's a new shadowy, sneaky figure in the Exiled Lands. He has found a way to cast magic despite the bracelets. And beyond that, I think I'll leave it up to our uh, creative lead, uh, or our content lead, Matt, to get more details mm -hmm, later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
So a couple of things in this clip. One, there is some story coming about being able to actually use sorcery even though you still have the bracelet on since that's actually against the lore that's in Conan Exiles already. The second thing that I want you to notice from that clip is actually the floating, I think it's referred to as a wisp later on in the live stream, that's actually providing light while you're running around. So that's a really cool feature, being able to use the wisp instead of holding a torch or something like that nature to light your path while you're running around the exiled lands or the Isle of Sipta. One big thing is we do have a relatively large window of time prepared for modders to be able to get their mods ready. Um, I can't say exactly how long it will be because that might give away or, or, or set precedent for what we expect our launch date will be and also our test live date. Um, but we, we will go to test live. We will have a version of the dev kit that will be ready to update mods. And there, there will be ample time for people to update mods before the game goes live. So obviously they're thinking about modders. They're also taking the 3.0 update and putting it on test live, which I personally, I'm really surprised that they're going to do this. I actually predicted that it wouldn't go to test live and that it would go straight to the live version of the game. But I'm wrong in this instance, and they do want to get hands on this patch and have it tested prior to launching to all the platforms, which additionally they do cover in the live stream saying that their goal is to launch the patch update 3.0 to all different platforms at the same time. So when it hits live on PC, it should also hit at PS4 and Xbox alike. Yeah, some more cool details about this spell actually are that there is local light on your character that lets you see in the darkness better than other people see in it. And if there are NPCs in the darkness area when you cast it, they'll actually start to cower in fear. And you can kind of go through and start to dismantle camps and kill things and take it apart methodically instead of just hitting one guy and aggroing everything in a half mile radius. <laughs> no, invisibility does give you, it does decrease the senses of enemies around you as well. Um, okay, so, gotcha. You can get closer to them, but you can't get right in their face. If you get too close, they will still attack you. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, I was gonna, someone was from chat was wondering if uh, spells stack at all. So if you cast darkness and then invisibility or... Some spells do, some spells don't. So there are big ones that are big environmental changes. Like we have a, a lightning storm that will just blast lightning bolts down at enemies below. We have that darkness spell. Uh, we have another one called Call of the Dead that raises this deathly fog out of the ground and zombies will fight alongside you. Those big ones that have an impact on the environment are specific to one area. If someone casts a lightning storm and you cast uh, Call of the Dead underneath it, the lightning storm will go away because we can only allow one major environmental mm -hmm. spell in the area. But if you cast darkness and you cast invisibility, yeah, you can run into darkness invisible. So things to unpack here, one, these spells do affect NPCs in different ways. So you hear him talk about the fact that they will cower in the darkness and allow you to kind of pick through them methodically. You can also use certain spells in conjunction. So say invisibility and darkness together or invisibility and a lightning storm. However, if there's something that affects the map, you cannot cast two map affecting spells at the same time. So this means it's actually, again, more balanced for PvP. So if you see someone casting a spell, another sorcerer could cast a different spell and cancel out the initial sorcerer's spell cast. I could just imagine a battle where sorcerers go back and forth casting these spells that affect the area or the territory, and that's a whole different way to battle in PvP. Implications, uh, of course, I'm, I'm up here on this ridiculous height, uh, just to show an example of how one could use, like a really basic example of how one could use an ice bridge to yeah. cross a chasm, for example. Uh, the ice bridge is destructible, as far as I'm aware. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, you can you can blow up an enemy one if you want. Um, yeah, you can just whack it with a weapon. If an enemy puts an ice bridge up, you can smack it and strike mm -hmm. it down. Uh, similarly with the bat demon, um, by the time you guys get it, it'll it'll be working the way it's supposed to. Right, right, right. <laughs> if you shoot someone on a bat demon with an arrow, it'll knock them off right away. Cool, okay. Now they talk about a couple of different ways to get around the map. One is the ice bridge, being able to bridge gaps, or maybe even using the ice bridge to get into another player's base, or the bat, 
right? Being able to fly around the map, but being able to get to high heights or being able to fly over a high wall. But both of these things are not super powerful. They talk about the fact that you can just hit the ice bridge with a weapon and it's going to go away or shoot an arrow at someone flying on the bat and it's going to drop them. So if at any point in time you had it in your mind that the sorcery mechanic was going to create a meta where the sorcerers were the most powerful thing in the game and they were going to be unstoppable, that is not the case. That is not the picture that Funcom is painting. Funcom is painting that yes, the sorcerers are going to be powerful, but it's a risky power to wield. You are as vulnerable to melee or ranged combat as any other player. And I would argue that you're likely to be even more vulnerable than a player that isn't using sorcery because your health and stamina is going to be less than a standard player would be. No, everything that we put in will just be an addition on top of the game that's already there. It won't change anything about, uh, you know your character itself at a fundamental level that requires wipe or your base at a fundamental level. Um, when we get back into the perk and attribute revamp later, uh, one thing we'll talk about is like we will do an attribute wipe. So whenever you log in, it'll tell you your attributes have been reset and you can just automatically mm -hmm. go in and set them back up. So for those of you that were worried that you were going to have to wipe your servers because of update 3.0, Funcom is saying that's not the case. You won't see server wipes from Funcom. Now that doesn't mean that private server owners won't decide to wipe their servers and start everybody over again. And it doesn't mean that there won't be mod conflicts if modders don't get their mods updated in the amount of time that Funcom gives them to be ready for update 3.0. There will be an attribute reset because they're changing the attribute system. Literally going from, I think it's like 352 points now or 392, I can't remember off the top of my head, all the way down to only having 60 points to spend to redo your character build. This fun little lad is a demonic portal. This is one of the new buildings that you can uh, create with the update. Yeah, this um, is one of my favorite things. I love the effect. Um, <laughs> what does it do? So it's a personalized fast travel system. Uh, you don't need to absolutely rely on the map room to get around. And for people playing on SIPTA and modded maps especially, this will be a, you know, a great way to be able to actually move around the map. Uh, but basically any, any number of these that you create for your clan will be able to access each other. And when you step inside the portal, some stones will appear and show you the names of the, the, the buildings as you've, as you've placed them out. And the stones actually point to those buildings in space. So if I'm at New River and I'm looking one at the volcano, the stone will be pointing north toward the volcano. So this is an additional fast travel system that's being added to Conan Exiles, both for the exiled lands, for the Isle of Sipta, and any modded map that you may be playing on. A little bit later on in the video, they actually talk about the fact that they'd like to make it where these could be shareable to the public. So if you're on a PVE server, you could place one of these down and have other players around the map able to use those teleporters. But that's just a feature that they hint to in this video, so it's not something that they are committed to having done for update 3.0, but something that we may see happen in the future. In closing here, all of this is coming to test live at some point in time. So I will be testing it on test live and I would encourage you to do the same. Download the test live client and get ready for this update. That way, once it comes out, you can test it and see how the balance works for you. I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for your continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. If you'd like to become a legend, there's a button that says join on this page. Click that for details. There's two videos on the screen. Click one of those to watch next and I'll meet you over there.